מותני לפניך, רוח חי וקיים, שחזרת בי נשמתי בחמלה רבה, אמונה שחסרה. מותני לפניך. Growing up, my mom used to tell me, in Yiddish, Zanish was the best, which basically means don't be who you are. They would say it so often, it almost became my nickname. And they're like, Chani Zanish is the best. I think that the moment that I came out as a lesbian woman, I realized that I didn't fit the mold. For my parents and the community I grew up in, I am no longer a Jew in their eyes. New York could soon become the sixth state in the country to allow same-sex marriages. New York is still in limbo when it comes to legalizing same-sex marriage. Protests in Albany today and still no vote on same-sex marriage from the state Senate. The issue for me and for many others, I don't have much of a choice. That's right, I don't have a choice. The issue to me is the Bible, the Torah. What is your religious teaching about what then happens to well, them, either here well, or in the well, afterlife? It's a transgression like hundreds of other transgressions, but it is a severe transgression. It's all of sexual licentiousness starting with adultery and incest. And the last three in this order are adultery, homosexuality, and bestiality. You know, God laid out rules. I don't understand all of them, by the way. I don't understand many of them, but I can't pick and choose. I Biblically, Torah pick speaking, and this is a very severe offense. That doesn't mean that we don't have the greatest compassion on those who might have that particular drive. We have compassion, but we don't lower the standards for them. Eyes 33, nays 29. <laughs> I think the significance of this would be if a gay couple went to an Orthodox rabbi and asked to be married by him, I still don't think that that Orthodox rabbi would perform such a ceremony. I don't think that on a religious level, uh, Judaism can affirm the union of a man and a man and a woman and a woman as a marriage on a religious level. Senate to live together in the civil union and have witnessed the same before this company and have given and pledged their faith each to the other and have declared same by the joining of hands and the exchange of vows I by the authority vested in me by the state of New Jersey do now pronounce you life partners congratulations Thank as you. they say in the old country mazel tov <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a give and take thing about a religious contract given the confines of orthodoxy and what does it mean for the two of us to be married. We really can't be under orthodox law. So we're married civilly. You can't get a ketubah, which is the wedding contract, um, because that's from a man and a woman. When we just got civilly unionized, um, people came from the community. We put, we put it out on a listserv and people came. And we had a reception at Dunkin' Donuts, and ice cream was on us, you know? Um, it was amazing to me that people just showed up. 
and, and applauded and gif, give us, gave us their wishes, their best wishes, and it was like, wow. This is supposed to be a bush, not a tree. So, um, my normal walking route to, uh, to Shul was to come straight down the street and cross at this intersection and walk up this way. And um, so I would be looking from the intersection and see whether or not there are hoses across. Where, where was the hose connected the hose to? Was right there. Was, those was across the water driver. source, right? So I could see whether or not the hose was there. And, uh, and then I would know if she's here or not. <laughs> and I liked knowing I have a block in advance, right? <laughs> Do you remember? And then we were just hang out here. Do you remember the first time you said to me, "Are you going to make a space for me?" Right. So because I had all you had, tools, you had there. tools on the bench, mm -hmm. and I had never sat down. Um, and we'd been standing around talking for about ten or fifteen minutes, and I said, "So are you going to invite me to sit down on the bench?" And then the rest of the summer, we sat on the bench and talked. Lots of people who were going to the synagogue were walking this way, and could see us sitting and chatting and uh, and I it felt risky. It felt very risky to have my community members see me sitting here week after week talking with them. I knew I was different when I was very young. And I I came out to myself when I was in my teens. And it was not something that I wanted. I tried everything not to have this be the case. But it never conflicted with my belief in God. I never felt that God had done something horrible to me. It wasn't hard for me until I tried to enter into orthodoxy. I had a rough coming out. And I went through a period of time feeling like this was a punishment. And I argued with God um, that if I need to be punished, so be it. But don't take my kids and my then husband down with me. Over time, with a lot of work and a lot of help, um, I got past feeling that it's a punishment um, and I didn't lose everything the way I had feared and in fact my life has really been blessed. I accept that what I do is an avera. It's a sin. It's wrong. I accept that Torah says this is wrong. Torah also says that the way I curse is wrong. Some things I can work on changing, and some things I can't. Or I can't today. It's not on my list to work on not being gay. This is who I am. It is as essential to my soul as being a Jew. They're not separable. And you're doing much better with the cursing. Am I? Yeah. I'm trying off <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I came out to myself when I was first learning about sexuality and, you know, theoretically, um, um, adolescence. So it just, I just heard about this men who like men better and women who like women better and I just, I just felt that's me, I identified more with it. And when I started college and looked around to see if I could find other people like that, you know, organizations or whatever, there just wasn't anything. Whatever there was was so far underground that I wasn't able to find it. It just didn't seem that there were any options for living a gay life and being an Orthodox Jew. Yeah.
Coming out isn't a must. I also think that it's really important to know our entire situation, and sometimes we need to stay closeted for whatever reason. You know, I've never told my parents. I'm like, I'm so out. My, I've never come out to my parents. They love my girlfriend. The day I tell them that she's my girlfriend, do you think they'll love her? Do I need to hurt them? And they've made it very clear that they don't want to know about the stuff in my life that they can change. They don't want to know that my daughters and I wear pants. They don't want to know that my son doesn't <laughs> daven with Minion most of the days. They don't want to know these things. Maybe they, maybe they even really do know, but they yeah. just, but as yeah. long as you don't talk as about it. As long as I don't, exactly. As long as you don't talk about it. It's fine. You know, they, they, they used to think, I should be a therapist or something like someone who helps people. And then, no, you know, that people are important, but the connection between God and people, I think, is so much more powerful that that's what I want to do. Orthodox women cannot be rabbis, um, at least not yet. I give it 50 years and they'll be on pulpits, but until then, <laughs> I will, you know, study and figure it out as I move through this process. Peace. Uh, optimism. I love the commitment. Acceptance. That orthodoxy gives us. Courage. I don't yeah. like the rigidity. Inclusion. Compassion. And the true art in life is to live within the confines of our commitment and be truly free. And that's Thank you. what I am committed to God, committed to law, and yet the desire to see certain things shift within that. My best friend in, in seminary, um, I fell in love with her. When I danced at my wedding and she came to the wedding and she was dancing with me, I cried. What I didn't know was that I was, like this was my lover I was saying goodbye to, but I, I didn't have words for what I was feeling. When I left my ex-husband, I, I didn't know that I was going to end up here. I think my first and only thought was about survival and about taking care of the kids. Okay. Oh, Shadow, you what color eyeshadow do you want? did not feel resentment towards the community um, regarding my sexuality, but I had a lot of resentments to the community for marrying me off without asking me if I wanted that or, or giving me the option that I didn't have to. Nobody said to me, you know, there's a whole world out there and you can make it on your own. Esther is also the recipient of the Judah Schwartz Memorial Award for Outstanding Midah. It's really sad that many Hasidic communities, that's all we have, is like, how thick are your stockings and how high is your collar, you know, your, your dress and, and how long is your sleeve. And, and we forget about looking at the person and saying, who are you? God made you. Orthodox community in general has been like sliding to the right in the last 20 or 30 years. I just read online about uh, families who don't eat in the room together. The wife will sit in the kitchen. I mean, when I was becoming religious, like nobody, nobody would do that. Nobody was banished to the kitchen. 
like everybody has to out from each other, like out out orthodox. Somehow there's going to be a backlash, and it's not going to be good for the for the orthodox community. A lot of the younger people are not taking it anymore. And unfortunately, they're losing a lot of a lot of the younger people because of this. You can't expect people to be like this. When we got married, we envisioned that we were going to have a religious household, a religious Orthodox household. Mm -hmm. You know, we had like, um, I think they were idealistic <laughs> visions of what our household would be. Lena would wear a wig and, you know, proper clothing and I would work or whatever. And, you know, we would have, raise a nice family and they would go to yeshiva and we would have a beautiful home and everything would be perfect and, you know, it was a dream. Yeah. It wasn't so much that I knew that I wanted to transition. Growing up, I didn't understand what was bothering me. I knew that I was different and that every time I saw a girl, I was jealous of the girl. But there was no solution to that feeling and expressing that wasn't allowed in any way. I think once I have the surgery, I'll feel a lot more comfortable with, with who I am, with my body. And myself will feel more in line with, with the body that I have. And I won't be consumed by the anxieties and the, the fears that I had before. Um, and that would allow me to move on with life, to uh, devote my time more to my family and be more present, you know. It's been very consuming up till now, you know, taking all of your thought and yeah. energy because... It's like an obsession almost. It, yeah. it is an obsession in a way because it's something very, very wrong that's always with you and never lets you forget. Yeah, exactly. This is like a roadblock, sort of, and now we'll be, you know, we'll be over, and we move forward, and we can live, and not worry about these things. <laughs> Constantly. Constantly, yeah. We'll just be like, normal. <laughs> In the beginning, it was very hard, just because everything that we sort of planned as a family, I mean, I guess my dreams, if you say, if, you know, they're kind of shattered, shattered and, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when a person comes out with something like that, I don't think it, you can just put it away. He used to be, a, he's not afraid anymore. Yeah. You know why? Because he's happier in the sand. <laughs> Fanny has just done so many amazing things with her life. I'd like to take us to a different journey, and that is the children of Orthodox gay parents. Because they too are in our community, and they are my children. My son's best friend, is name, his, his name is Aaron, and Aaron stayed at our house all the time. He ate dinner, he spent Shabbat. He, he was like a second son on so many levels. For various different reasons, I needed to move out of the house I was living in, rented an apartment um, across from Aaron's house. My son was thrilled. He was now going to live across the street from Aaron. What can be better than that? But everything changed. Somehow, Aaron hadn't told his mom that I was gay. Aaron's mom found out and began to speak to every neighbor, telling them how terrible I was. I was good enough to host her son. I was good enough to take him to trips with us. I was good enough to feed him breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and, and, and drive him to school. But all of a sudden, she found out that I was gay. And I was so bad that it was OK to poison the entire neighborhood. 
to the point where she got all of the neighbors together to threaten my landlord that if I was not thrown out of my apartment, that there was going to be serious consequences to pay. I didn't know what to do. I called the rabbi of the shul that I attend. And I said, Rabbi Blass, I need to really speak to you. He wasn't very comfortable because he knew what was coming. I found out later that the neighbors had talked to him. They didn't know what to do. Just a little bit of background. I'm online. I'm gay. I lead lesbian retreats. I do all this stuff. I mean, people know. You Google my name, you know that I'm gay. So it's not really hard to find out. But in the community, there's like this don't ask, don't tell policy, and I'm fine with it. I sat down with Rabbi Blass and I said, Rabbi Blass, I'm gay. And I know that you know that. But I need to tell you this. And I'm telling you this because I have another identity. I am a from woman who is raising modern Orthodox children. My children are in your schools. They keep Shabbat and they keep kosher. And they are your children's friends. If I am forced to move out of my house, my children will have to be in a community without from children around them. They will not keep Shabbos much longer. And I don't know what else will happen in terms of their Yiddish guide. You owe it to my kids to keep them here. And I don't know what you need to do to make that happen. But I am a from woman with three kids. And my children deserve a Jewish education. I didn't realize I didn't say that. Uh, Rabbi Blash really stepped up. I don't know what he did or what he said, but it stopped. And, like, immediately mm -hmm. it stopped. We can't find our community right now. It's much harder to keep things. It's much harder to be part of religion, I guess. It becomes more complicated. The fact that transition is going on and things like that, it's harder to fit in. The fact that we moved away made it easier for us to stay together through transition. Because if we had stayed where we were, the backlash would have been a lot more severe. The only person that I had any kind of relationship with on a religious level was the rabbi. When I came out to him, his reaction was very, very negative. He wanted nothing to do with me. I mean, he told me, um, don't convince yourself of anything. And after I had just bared that to him, my secret to him, that I was transitioning and the need that I had to transition, um, that response was not what I was looking to hear. Even, even if you don't accept it, there was no understanding, there was no kindness, there was no anything from him on that. Um, and that rabbi was with me through my whole life. What?
And this is a revolt against God, an open revolt against God. Because everybody knows that you can legalize it. They're going to be going in the streets. They're going to be sweeping in our buildings. And they're going to be taking out children because they're immoral people, these people. That people have to break down all the... I began trembling before God in the mid-90s. At that time, the rabbis, the Orthodox rabbis, were not speaking about homosexuality publicly. Um, it was very much don't ask, don't tell. And trembling really became the way for that the community, Orthodox gays and lesbians, actually saw rabbis addressing this as a legitimate issue on the community's table. I just want to know that I have, that I can have a relationship with Hashem as a Jew completely including this part of my being. I think rabbis, like they have for centuries, are finding creative solutions around homosexuality. I think there are rabbis who say, you know what, I know what it says in the Torah. What you do sexually is between you and God. I want you to observe Shabbos, keep a kosher home, come daven, come be part of the community, live together, and, that, and what you do is your business. I think a whole generation of young Orthodox gay and lesbian Jews came out because of trembling and because of how history changed. Hi guys. Hi. Glad you could make it. Hi, buddy. Let's go to the freezer. Hello. Hi. All right. How are you doing? Good to see you. Community is important if you're going to be Orthodox. It's, in, it's hard. I don't know that it's possible to be Orthodox alone. I think this community is different from many, many communities. This community is, is tends to be a highly educated community. There's a high percentage of professionals in the community. There are people who are working outside of the Jewish world in you know mainstream America. So compared to some Orthodox communities, there's just a lot more exposure and awareness about what's going on. The orange, Shekhinah or Malchus, and the orange is on the Seder plate because a lot of gay and lesbian felt unwelcome in the Jewish community at Seder time. And so they wanted to almost bring chametz, they wanted to bring bread on the Seder plate. And they said, no, that means if we bring bread onto the Seder plate, then we're saying we really don't belong. But if we bring something that's allowed on the Seder plate, but just a little different, we're still part of the community. And so the orange is placed on the Seder plate for all those who don't feel like they belong in any community. And so they're belonging with us. I'm not really part of a community where I live. I'm, you know, not that involved. I never had friends really in person before I got online, so I never got to know all that many people closely. My life has been so different the last few years. I don't like to imagine it without the internet because I'm so involved in it, and not just this, but many different ways. It's a whole new world. I remember the first time that I landed on a website and saw that there are gay Orthodox Jews who are supporting each other and that in some places they actually meet, like in New York City, but um, that we're all over the world. I mean, because initially I believed I was, you know, as so many people do, I was for sure the only person who was like me. I was the only person who could find themselves in um, a heterosexual marriage with three children in yeshiva, living in an orthodox world and figuring out that I'm gay. I was sure I was the only person in the world like that. And I, I just sat in front of the computer screen and cried. I just cried that 
there are other people out there and there's, there's help and there's hope. Um, and that was the message of the website. There is hope. Don't fear, there is hope. Eight hundred people came and it was a very big thing in the modern Orthodox Jewish community. Parts of the rabbinic community were very critical of the panel, of hosting the panel, of discussing these issues in public, of uh, seeming to give some level of legitimacy to homosexual life as they understood it. And a number of us felt that many of the reactions uh, were very um, emotional and visceral. All my life, when I was in yeshiva, when I was a kid, whenever I even thought about bringing up this subject, if anybody even heard those thoughts or I mentioned to anybody, they said, this, this is not something we talk about because nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to talk about this. This is something that we do in private. This is something that we don't talk about. This is not something we're ashamed. But look how many people are here. I reached out to a number of friends of mine who, in the rabbinic community and in the educational Jewish community to help me draft uh, a statement uh, that would touch on some of these issues. Where can a modern Orthodox uh, ethic in relationship to people who are homosexual that on the one hand maintains a fidelity to the halachic system and at the same time understands uh, people's struggles, empathizes with the difficulties and tries to uh, be as inclusive as possible of people in the community even if we don't necessarily agree with their life choices. We published in our blog in the summer and uh, we started to gain signatures for it. The Statement of Principles was, was it just felt like a, a sigh of relief. That's, that was the sense that I have of, you know, I'm just a, a, a little less marginalized, um, more hopeful. It, it was huge for me to read it. It was huge. The document says I exist. And that and, all and, of you exist. And that Right, that, I, that I'm not just an oxymoron, I'm not a walking oxymoron. There are people who say it's not possible to be orthodox and gay. Well, it is possible and it exists and we exist. And so that is still the problem of accepting difference. Right? I think orthodoxy, modern orthodoxy, is trying to come to terms with this. Um, I think what it requires is, is orthodox gay Jews um, staying within orthodoxy and it's it's a it's a sadness when people feel they have to leave and can't live between their two worlds and and bridge their two worlds together somehow They come together to create a community where they can say, I'm so many more things than being Jewish. I'm so many more things than being gay. But these two things are part of who I am. And I need other people like that. So many gays and lesbians have lost their families. They're looking for a new community. They're looking for a new family. And we create family. The reality is that gays and lesbians who figure out their sexuality also begin to figure out their Jewishness. When you've been told your entire life, don't be who you are, and you meet someone who says, I love who you are, be more of it, and pushes you to do that, and encourages you to go there, I want to do that for the rest of my life. When the time is right and, and my partner and I stand under the chuppah, 
there's going to be a lot of stuff that I will have to do before that emotionally to be ready for that. On a halachic stand. And yet I also know, as I say this, I know with 100% clarity that I will stand under the chuppah with her. And the only way to shift a community, the only way to shift people's perspective, is to live amongst them and to be with them and to be one of them. I want the same for any young man or woman growing up in an orthodox world and noticing that their sexuality doesn't fit the mold. And so I stay.